Hey, welcome back to the channel. So I just got back from Disney and kind of wanted to go over some of the things that worked, some of the things that didn't work, and maybe what I'll do in the future. You know, maybe this will help some of you camera nerds like me when you go to Disney, help you kind of organize your bag and what you may or may not take. So first of all, let's start off with the backpack. Again, I was using this 21 liter Provoke Wonder backpack. First day I took it, uh, I took a... I took it down to what I thought was pretty much bare, bare bones minimum, about as loud as I could possibly get it. And, and it, it did great, you know. We went to uh, Hollywood first, then we went to Epcot, then we went to Disney Springs. I mean, a lot of walking that day, a lot of, you know, sightseeing and stuff. The back tag did great, never got uncomfortable, never got sweaty, even though it was a little bit hot. Uh, all in all, it was a great experience. The only negative thing that I'll have to say about this backpack is that when you go through security, because there's the backpack, there's so many nook, nooks and crannies and little places to put gear and pockets and stuff like that, they're going to take you over and search your bag. I mean, that's fine. I mean, that's to be expected. It's a, it's a busy park. Uh, but it's going to take a while to get through security just because of how much stuff, you know, little places that are in this bag that they need to inspect. So the first day was the only day I used this bag simply because every time I went to security, I didn't want to have to go through that whole, you know, it's like a 20 minute process, you know, uh, to go through the whole bag inspection. And it just sort of kind of, a, it, it just took longer than I wanted to. So I switched over to a different bag, one that I just happened to throw in my backpack at the very last second for just in case. And it is the uh, Peak Design six liter everyday sling and this is what I use predominantly uh, throughout the rest of my trip besides the very first day again it didn't have anything to do with this backpack's bad or this is better one of the versus the other it was simply because when I went through security I mean it just took forever and I didn't want to, have to mess with that every time so let's go through my backpack and I'll show you what I used and what I didn't use and kind of give you a brief rundown of you know how each thing kind of worked so we'll start off with the old FX30 throughout the trip. This was my main camera. I used it everywhere I went. I took it everywhere I went. It's fairly light. When you kind of start comparing the weight of this camera to other cameras out there in the APS-C world, this camera matches up with those specs, you know? So I don't think it's you know too heavy or too cumbersome. Again, it doesn't have a viewfinder. <clears throat> That's a good and a bad thing. Uh, you, Again, it's pretty bright down at Disney. You're not going to be able to, you know, look in there and see exactly what you need to see for pictures and videos. But at the same time, it, it makes it easier to get in and out of your bag without a viewfinder on there. And I like that about it. I always see the video that it takes was, is great. I'll show you some of that. I shot everything in 4K60. Never had an overheating problem or anything like that. Was really impressed with the stabilization of the camera. Like I only had to use Catalyst Browse on just a couple of, uh, of clips. Uh, but for the most part, I just had on active stabilization. We're just rolling around, you know, filming things here and there and everywhere. And I think that all come out really, really nice. As far as the pictures, I mean, I know that, that people will, you know, they'll, they really hate on this camera for the photo qualities. But again, that's the only one I took. Didn't really have any problems with the photo qualities. I mean, you're just gonna be doing no high level photography. It's not gonna be doing any sports photography or anything like that. It just has electronic shutter. I'm not sure what the limitations of the electron, only having an electronic shutter are, uh, but for what I was doing, just taking snapshots of, you know, my daughter and her cheer team, and I was walking around the park, taking snapshots as I walked along, you know, little things here and there. It did a great job of that. Let's talk about the lenses a little bit that I used with the uh, FX30. I took the uh, Sigma 18 to 50 lens um, as my general zoom. I had the 56 millimeter Sigma and I also took the Sony 11 millimeter 1.8. Okay, the 56 millimeter, I didn't use it one time in my whole time at Disney. I just never really found a use for it. It was just extra weight in the bag. I bought it just in case, never needed it. The 11 millimeter 1.8, I use it a little bit. I use it walking around here and there, took a few pictures with it. It is really wide, like that's a little wider than I like to shoot. I, I know a lot of people like to shoot that wide, but for me it's just a little bit, it's just not what I like to do. 
uh, but it does a really good job at video and with the the footage you take with it you know it stabilizes really well with it and the pictures are nice and sharp and I, you know i don't have any complaints about that it's just a little bit wider than what i'm used to and what i'm comfortable shooting the lens that i use most is the sigma 18 to 50. Uh, i use it for dang near everything and and it's great i mean that's all i can really say about it it's nice it's nice and sharp it's versatile it's 2.8 it really just fit the bill for pretty much everything that I had going on. Of course, I wish it was a little bit wider, a little bit longer, but in this instance, I really value the size of this lens. It really came in handy, and that's just pretty much what I used the whole time. We can talk a little bit about 360 camera versus GoPro. I use the GoPro a lot. I didn't use a 360 camera one time. I, th I thought the 360 camera would be cool to be holding on rides like that and stuff, but I just never got around to doing that, so I just never used it. Plus, you have to go back in and reframe everything, and I just didn't really, it's just not something I, I just don't like doing that unless I have to. I used the GoPro a lot, and what I usually did was, with it was just carry it around in my pocket, and uh, when I wanted to film something, pop it out, you know, click the button, it starts up really quick, and you can just kind of film around like this, and also you can you can walk around with a with the GoPro and get nice stable footage. Is it the best footage in the world? No, but it's not bad either. And you know, I just I really do. I like to just get my footage, put it back into the computer, look at it, film exactly what I want, not have to go through that extra step. Uh, so for me. The GoPro is a, you know, the clear winner. I have this Absure MC light, never even pulled it out of my bag. Obviously I had extra batteries. And for the most part, these Sony Z batteries, they last all day long. So one battery, maybe two, will get you through all day long, go back to the hotel room, charge them up. Microphone, I mean, I never used it once. I wasn't doing any vlogging. I wasn't, you know, doing any kind of special recording. So I didn't even use this, not even one time. But I'm glad I took it just in case, but Let's talk about the old uh, extra Apple charger, the MagSafe battery pack. Like this thing I thought was going to be great. So my phone, I had this thing all the way charged up one day. My, my phone ran all the way down. So I was like, oh, I'll just put this on there. Dude, it only charged my, bat my phone about halfway up before this thing went dead. So I don't know what good is that. It only, takes, it only holds about a half a charge or maybe three quarters of a charge in this thing before it goes dead. But... You know, after that, it's, it's no good. And it's, it's, for, it's a chunky little thing, so I don't know. And it can only charge your iPhone. That's it. So, not sure if that was worth it or not. A little bit disappointed in that it doesn't have more charge overall. Next thing, we'll talk about the, the old ZV-1 here. A ZV-1 would be pretty much a perfect Disney camera if you're not a camera nerd. Like, obviously, if you're a camera nerd, you're going to be wanting to take more than the ZV-1. And I think that the ZV-1 would do a fantastic job of doing everything that you needed to do while you're at Disney. It's, it's nice and small and light, compact. You open it up, it starts right up, and you can start recording or taking pictures or whatever you need to do. You don't have to fumble around for the on-off switch all the time. Uh, it's e easy to operate. Pretty much, you know, the perfect camera to take on uh, things like Disney, you know, and stuff like that. If you're not a camera nerd, if you're a camera nerd, you're probably going to want a little bit more. Maybe a little APS-C camera, maybe a full frame camera. I would never take a full frame camera, but that's just me. But I think for most people, ZV-1 would be awesome. Would be awesome. So we can go into tripods. I took the Manus pod and also took the Sony uh, vlogging grip. Never used either one of them. Never used either one. Accessory that I did use a lot was this camera strap uh, by Peak Design. And uh, I don't like to go full on my wrist with this thing, full cuff, because it's really hard to get off. Uh, once you get it on, it gets kind of cinched up. I like just doing it around the palm of my hand like that, gripping the camera like that, and using it that way. And a lot of times when you're, you know, at Disney, you're kind of leaning over the rail, you know, of, a, of like say the, uh, the uh, safari ride, you know, you're kind of leaning over the rail of the, of the uh, bus there. You know, if you drop your camera, and that's a bumpy ride, 
Uh, you could drop your camera pretty easy, you know, just things like that. So you definitely want to have some kind of, you know, way to secure your camera. And I do like it just around my wrist like that. We can kind of go on the outside of the bag here. A couple of things that I have. I have this uh, Falcam uh, backpack clip. And these are really useful so you don't have to put your camera up. I know like it's easy to get the uh, FX30 out of this uh, side access. But once you put it in your backpack, the chances of you actually you know, going through the motions of pulling it out are pretty slim. They're pretty slim. So I, I always like to have my camera out and accessible. And uh, one way to do it is this uh, backpack clip. I didn't use it as much. The, uh, also, Peak Design makes one similar to this. I mean, everybody knows about the, that one and this one probably too. So these are really helpful. It just sits right here on your shoulder. And every time you want to use your camera, you can just pull it out, do whatever you need to do, put it back up. Then you're not having to access your camera each time you want to, want to use it. But for the most part, I just carried it around in my hand with the uh, Peak Design cuff. That's how I did it. Also, would highly recommend putting the S-Beaner or a carabiner or whatever you want to call this on your bag. That way, if you get on a ride or something and need to take your hat off, strap it to your bag, you can do that in two seconds. And I'm glad I put that on there because there was a couple of times I needed to you know, put my hat somewhere and this was a good way to stow it. You don't have to worry about flying off. So let's talk about how I actually walked around the park the majority of the time. The first day, like I say, I took my backpack, but every time I went through security, it was a whole ordeal and just kind of wanted to cut that out. And uh, after the first day, I realized I wanted the lightest setup possible because it is a lot of walking, a lot of walking. I think the first day we walked like 10 miles or so. So after the second day, I was, <laughs> I was feeling it pretty good. And man, I was like, I'm taking the bare bones minimum. And because of the security situation and because of, you know, I wanted the lightest setup possible, uh, this uh, Peak Design sling bag, really really was fit the bill for what i really actually needed also another thing that i really liked about the peak design sling bag and i didn't realize this until i was out actually walking around the park is you can actually put all your stuff in the bag and it's easy to access a lot more easy to easier to access than a backpack uh, you don't have to have it clipped on your shoulder you don't have to carry it around as much in your hand uh, you can stow it away in this get it in get it out really easy I did like that about this particular bag. So let's talk about what I actually took to the parks with me every day. I took the FX30 with 18 to 50 millimeter Sigma lens, 2.8. I took that with me everywhere. To the parks, to the competition, everywhere. This went with me. Up in the top part of this bag is a little zipper pouch. And I always kept an extra battery with me for my Sony and an extra battery with me for my GoPro. Always had some extra cleaning wipes in there, always. You never know when you're gonna get a little smudge on your lens or whatever on accident, so I always have that in my bag. And like I say, I always have my GoPro with me. You can just whip it out, and just start filming around, get nice, stable, decent looking footage just with your GoPro. So I felt that that was, uh, I really enjoyed having that in my bag. And also, I took the 11 millimeter Sony, just in case I need something super wide, um, wider than I can get with the 18 millimeter. I thought this was, and it, man, this thing is like a lot, lot, you know, so it wasn't that big of a deal to carry it around. And then in the front here, good place to store your cell phone. Put my cell phone down the front, slide it right in there. Good place to put it. That way when you're like sitting on a bus or whatever, you have a place to kind of put your stuff. Now, I will say this about the sling bag, <laughs> and you know, it's obviously, it's a man purse. It's a man purse. Um, you just have to get over that, I guess. <laughs> uh, it's, it just is what it is, but it is nice. It is convenient and I do like it. The only thing I don't like about it is there's no place for a water bottle. I mean, maybe you could strap it in here to the bottom somehow, but anyway but there's no you know spot specifically designed for a water bottle but again it worked for me it worked for me it was nice and comfortable took this thing all over every park that was there took it to the competitions never felt you know like it it never weighed me down and never slowed me down 
it was pretty much what, what I would take with me again, for sure. I would take this with me. And when he went through security, I mean, there's only a couple, you know, a, a pockets in this thing. They could open it up, see pretty much any, anything on the inside. Take a look at this outside pocket, and you're in and out of security in no time. So that was the main reason I wound up going with this bag uh, initially. But in the end, it was probably the right bag for me all along just because of how small it is and, you know, lightweight. Because like I say, again, you can't really pack this thing too full of gear uh, because it's just not, you're limited by space. You're limited by space. So that's it. You know, that's what all I took to Disney. All my lenses, all my cameras, my backpack, my man purse, some of my tripods. That's all I took. And, you know, it was more than enough to get me by. You know, even though I was fitting everything in that little bitty backpack, um, it's all I needed. It's all I needed. In fact, I didn't need that much. Whatever I fit in here is what I, all I really needed. You know, you could do this whole trip with a ZV-1. There's no question about that. Get great results out of it. But being a camera nerd, hey, I wanted something just a little bit more fancy than that. So that's what I took. So I hope this helps you if you're planning on a trip to Disney or some kind of theme park like that. Uh, I always try to keep it light and simple as possible. It would be my main suggestion hope this uh hope you've enjoyed the video thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one